Oh, boys and girls, quite enough of that already, isn't it? Thank you for joining me once again for another thrilling episode of Who's Wrong on the Interwebs? Of course, it's recidivist defenders. Of course, it's lame Norton being lame as usual. This is a video in which lame Norton is being partly reasonable and saying one or two things that are on the face of them sensible, rational, and perfectly indicated for a person to say. Unfortunately, though, as usual, what Lamb Norton does in these videos is indisperses much of what he says, which is remotely possibly sensible in the right context, with a bunch of absolute nonsense, which is anything but. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through Lame Norton's video in my usual fashion, which is a pointwise response off the cuff to what he says as he says it by use of the pause, comment, continue methodology. We will watch Lame's entire video from start to finish, as is my want here on the channel. It will be interrupted repeatedly by me to make corrections as I see fit. If you don't like that style of video, click off now. If you do, subscribe join the channel as a member, pass it on to others, um, enjoy, yes, good, don't forget to hit the like button because studies absolutely show unequivocally that metabolic dysfunction and obesity is strongly related to not hitting the like button on my videos. All right, let's hear from Lame Norton about what he thinks is what and put him right where he's wrong. Now, caveat, Lame does make the same error of interpretation a number of times in this video, and uh, I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to correct him repeatedly in the same fashion. Every time he makes the same mistake, I will correct him in the same fashion. So get ready for that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, yes, enjoy. Right, lame. Off you go, son. What's up, guys? We're back with another educational video, and this one. Right, well, there's the first error. The word there that is being used is risk. Risk is a cause and effect statement. It needs to be underpinned, not underpinned. Underpinned is what it needs to be by empirical interventional research science. Shut up, phone. Who asked you? Goodness. Um, yeah, so a failure to underpin a statement about risk with experimental, interventional, properly designed, properly randomized, properly powered properly disciplined, properly observed, properly controlled experimental research projects over multiple decades with human beings as subjects locked in laboratories under control and observation the entire time. Forget it. You can't inform on risk. You can only inform on associations that can be collected with much looser forms of naturalistic observation of a non-scientific kind. Ergo, things like epididly doodly middly moodly mology and such like, or, or cohort studies, or that kind of stuff, um, not good enough. You cannot inform on risk with those kind of studies, not one iota. So every time the word risk is used in this video going forward, I will correct it as, no, not risk. So there we go. This is a caveat to all of that. All right, let's make some progress. We're talking about red meat and the risk of disease. No, not risk. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Why would we do that, lame Norton? You're an idiot in general. As I say, in this video, you've said one or two things that are remotely sensible, potentially in the right context. Uh, but that's an exception rather than that's the rule for you, lame Norton. What's next? Leave a comment. Oh, the algorithm. So a new study that's getting a lot of play in the media came out in Nature. It assessed the effect of unprocessed red meat. Okay, so there's a mistake. Effect. No, this is not a cause and effect study. That would take a scientifically controlled interventional study, the kind of which I was outlining just a few minutes ago. So no, not health effects. Effect is the conjugate of cause, cause and effect. This is an association. Okay, so the word effects should be struck from the title of this paper. This paper cannot inform on effects. Okay, simple. Meat consumption with various diseases like type 2 diabetes. Right. Good. Okay, so let's just, b before Lame prattles on, let's go through and listen to me prattle on instead, because I'm much better at this than, than Lame is. Let's look at these actual numbers here that are being reported. They're calling it an RR, which they're calling a risk ratio, so mistake, no. This study cannot inform on risk. 
It's an incidence ratio, and it's adjusted, by the way, uh, which means fabricated, which means this belongs in the fiction section and is not science. This is a naturalistic um, fallacy, because it's not even an observation, because it's adjusted. Uh, but anyway, what does it say? It says that the 95% confidence around the relative risks, so-called, being reported here are no effect for hemorrhagic stroke, none for, ex for ischemic stroke, none for type 2 diabetes, none for IHD, none for breast cancer, and basically none for colorectal cancer. The 95% lower bound only just exceeds 1. It's 1.01, .01, so there is nothing of any value or utility to report in this paper. Signal-to-noise ratio, this is hopeless. This is a waste of energy, except to inform folks that there is no apparent association even, let alone a cause and effect um, artifact at play here. We're done, pretty much. That's all the assessment we need to do on this paper. However, Lane wants to say a bunch of stuff that's wrong, so let's listen to him and put him right. Breast cancer, heart disease, and some various other things. It got a lot of play because the conclusion of the study was basically that there was either no evidence or just weak evidence for unprocessed red meat causing or being associated with... Well, which lame? Causing or being associated? Because they're not the same thing. There is no evidence whatsoever of causality at play here. None. I've covered that, I think, in more and than enough detail in this video alone, let alone in hundreds of other videos I've made over the years. So no, not cause at all. Association? Well, it would be if they reported what they actually observed, which they haven't done. They've adjusted. Ergo, it's fantasy. It's fallacy. It's made up stuff. It's not science. It's not even a naturalistic observation because it's not an observation that was actually made. It's a great story. It needed much more emphasis on the dragons and perhaps a bit less incest next time. And a better ending. One day I'll get over that. Maybe. The risk of these diseases. There have been a lot of... No, not risk. Is coming out assessing the effects. No, not effects. No, no studies at all have looked at effects. Lame. None at all. Of red meat on disease. One of the problems with trying to assess the effects. No, not effects. Lame. Not not effects at all. No. Of a certain food on disease is you can't do a twenty-year human randomized control trial. Right. So therefore, you cannot discuss risk, cause, effect. Or any of those kind of words that that invoke and require that we are making a cause and effect statement at all. There is no evidence, whatever, that is capable of informing on this question or this moot or this hypothesis in any way, one way or the other. We are done. There is no science on this. Epidemiology is not science. Epidemiology is hypothesis generating pilot work okay simple what's next not a reasonable expectation what that's that right it's not reasonable ergo stop trying to say because it's unreasonable to do the science required to make the claim we want to make let's just make the claim anyway because it's unreasonable to be able to make the claim that is what is unreasonable lame norton making the claim anyway because there is no evidence to support the claim okay that's where the charlatanism is. That's where the misdirect is. That's where the propagandizing of people is. That's where the dishonesty and scientific lack of integrity sits, son. Right there. Okay? Very clear. Left with is basically epidemiology, where we either look at a population of people, say like Italians, and their risk of death. No, not risk. No. Incidents. And it's only that if you report what you observed in that regard without correction or adjustment, which is fantasy. This is, say, Americans, and you look at their red meat consumption or any other food and look at how those correlate together, or... Which will tell you nothing because of the milieu, the unlimited number of completely uncontrolled degrees of freedom in these observational populations. We're done, but not science.
or you do what's called cohort studies, which tend to be a little bit better because you're assessing the same people. It's not just cross-sectional, it's longitudinal. So you're following them for one, two, five, 10, 20 years. There's which no still tells us nothing because they're not controlled studies, lame. The uncontrolled degrees of freedom are just that, uncontrolled. We don't have science. We don't even have an observation if you correct the outcomes in any way. We are done. Why are you still talking? No intervention, but you're looking at how much of certain foods did they consume and what was their- No, you're looking at what they tell you they're consuming on a respondent data form. You're not observing what they're consuming. You're not keeping them under observation. You are leaving them to go and live their lives under their own recognizance. You have no idea how accurate their recording of data is whatsoever. And I can tell you how accurate, how accurate it is, lame. Not. Okay? Goodness gracious, son. Get a clue. Incidence of disease. It's a little bit better in that each person is kind of their own control. No, they are not. There is no control being exerted. None whatever. Absolute nonsense, son. But there is no intervention and there is no randomization. And therefore, there is no control. For goodness sake. This is, a, this is a boy who claims to know more about this than I do. For some reason. <laughs> good oh, good oh. And one of the downsides to epidemiology is many times people who consume more of a certain food, they don't just do that in isolation. These are wrapped up in a bunch of other behaviors. Right, so uncontrolled degrees of freedom. We're done here. There's the reasonable statement. That's what you should have said and left it at that. This is not science. This is hypothesis generating pilot work that needs to be tested with actual science. Unfortunately, we can't do that with human beings. Ergo, that's why the area of human nutrition, so-called science, remains actually a ring-fenced area of ideology, mostly bought and paid for. There is no science to be had here. Fantasy is what there is to be had here. Ideology, propaganda, spin doctory, miseducation, misanthropy. Bastardization of the, sign, of the name of science by claiming that human nutrition science is in fact a science when it's anything but. That with some indispersed mechanistic speculation studies that are reductionist, short term, and poorly controlled. Goodness sake, no son. So this study was a meta-analysis where they were combining a bunch of different studies that looked at the effects of No, not effects. No, son. Processed red meat, which I think is important because processed red meat does appear to have a pretty significant association with certain disease risk. Not really. No, that's a stretch too. If you look at the actual statistics that are available in the literature, lame, and you do that with a statistically competent mindset, which I do have and you don't. So they looked at unprocessed red meat, and one of the things... Yes, it's a good distinction to keep those two things separate because they are separate things, and they do have slightly different results in terms of outcome statistics, yes, but it's really not as significant as you've just implied without actually giving us any numbers. Science is litigated empirically lame. That means numbers, son. Okay. What they did was, in the statistical method... God, challenge for somebody who can be bothered to watch this video through from start to finish and count the number of hard jump cuts that this boy does in every single one of his videos. It's amazing. It's stunning how many jump cuts there are. Wow. Instead of trying to fit a dose response in what's called a log linear manner, which basically log linear assumes that, say, going from zero to 100 grams of red meat should have the same effect as going from 100 to 200 grams of red meat, that there should be some kind of linear risk effect. So in this study, they did- No, not risk. And not effect. The incidence report. If in fact, that is what the authors are reporting upon, what they actually observed. Not make that assumption. I don't want to get too much into the statistics. Because you're incompetent to do so. That's why, lame. You've been challenged on more than one occasion to come and talk to me about science anytime you like, sunshine. Whereupon I'll teach you and your viewers a lesson. But you lack the courage to do so. Instead, you spend a lot of energy trying to undercut me personally and undercut my credibility, which is beyond reproach. In fact, lame.
whatsoever, as I will prove to you any day of the week or twice on Sundays if you actually front up for a discussion with me about science. Still waiting, though, uh, but go ahead, though. You, you just keep taking shots at me behind the scenes. Make sure you stay within the law when you do so, lame. Just a hint. Right, what's next? Love it, but it had more freedom in the assumptions it made in terms of what the dose response was going to look like. And so yeah, so what have you just said, lame? What information have you just imparted to your audience there at all? None. So they also did different ratings based on the study, based on the bias. Yeah, so what? Ratings. That's somebody's opinion. And one of the other things they did for was they controlled for various other lifestyle factors. No, they did not. Control is exerted prior to data collection lame. That's what science is about. You plan your study, you control everything before the fact. You collect your observations and you report the observations you made. That's what science is. Epidemiology, on the other hand, is anti-science, really, because what they do that is epidemiology of nutrition, health science, those kind of things in particular. Let's caveat that. What they do is they control nothing up front. They collect data of a very, very poor and very, very unreliable nature, i.e. respondent data, usually. They believe what those respondents tell them without question. So there's your first flaw. Then they ignore the observations that they make on the basis of those inputs. They adjust them to something else using a completely inappropriate methodology, which is utterly incapable of petitioning causality any more than in the standard fashion, i.e., if you cannot establish causality using a single variate regression, which you cannot, then you still cannot do it using multiple regression. Because a multiple regression is still just an association, which is incapable of petitioning. Let me spell this out for you even more clearly. If you look at the death rates of two populations on the basis of red meat consumption, and you adjust the outcome of death on the basis of age, um, exercise, however you're going to measure that somehow. Again, people tell lies about that. Um, drinking, same deal. Smoking, same deal, etc. And say, so now we've got a more accurate result because we've, we've controlled all of those things after the fact by Xing them out using yet more correlations. Then you're a charlatan if you believe that's possible. If a person dies in a given period of time, that's a binary node thing. The person is either living or they're dead. They're not a Schrodinger's person. They're an actual person. They live or they die. When someone has died, how do you tell me how much of their death was attributable to red meat consumption, if any at all, smoking, if any at all, drinking, if any at all, exercise, if anything at all, or age, if anything at all? And how do you proportion those things out and say that's how much of it was due to age and how much? Of it? You can't. It's ridiculous. It's nonsensical buffoonery. It's totally without scientific discipline or logic. It's, it's smoke and mirrors to try and get around the fact that actually epidemiologists in health and nutrition circles are not doing science. They're trying to make it look scientific by saying, yes, but we've fixed that after the fact, which is impossible. Okay? Utter nonsense. It's like smoking, BMI, and some other... Right, all collinearities. All inextricably collinear with the incidence of death in any given uh, population. We're done with that. It will not work. It cannot work. The very most basic assumption of a linear regression is that the factors put into that linear regression, that multiple linear regression, are not collinear. Well, all of those things absolutely are collinear. We're done. What's next? Things, which is really important because people who tend to eat more red meat actually tend to smoke more, they tend to exercise less, 
and they tend to have a lower amount of fruit and vegetable consumption. Right. And some of those things may well impact on someone's likelihood speculatively of mortality in any given period of time in one way or the other. Ergo, they are confounds, they are collinearities. We are done. This is not a study that can inform on risk of anything. Neither is it a study that actually informs on incidence because of the adjustment, which I've just been talking about in some detail. So basically, in this study, they found weak associations of red meat with breast cancer, colon cancer, type 2 diabetes, and they found no association for ischemic heart disease and also no risk of hemorrhagic stroke. This paper has gotten a lot of press. Obviously, the anti-meat crowd has gone crazy over it, saying that it has to be wrong and whatnot. And Why? Why does it have to be wrong? It isn't wrong. It's a report on the fallacious fantasy outcomes of the people who've put the study together on the basis of adjusting things, which showed probably as expected by anyone sensible, that there's really nothing to see here in terms of meat consumption and incidence of death associations because there is no reason to suspect that meat would increase your risk of death in any way. It's the, it's the food that we have absolutely evolved consuming the vast majority of our diet in the form of meat and associated animal fat for probably about four and a half million years leading up to the current modern human beings. Why on earth would we expect it to shorten our lifespan in any way? And then the carnivore crowd has gone absolutely ballistic, saying, see, this proves you can eat as much meat as you want. But it doesn't, though. That's the sensible thing that Lame's saying here. It proves nothing. Either way, it's a waste of time. All it shows is that there's nothing to see here in terms of the reported, adjusted, association, which is basically none. Okay, let's move on. Let's, let's do the next thing, because this isn't it. And it's not going to harm you. And I'm here to basically tell both those groups they need to shut the hell up. What yeah, well, Lane, everyone who says things about stuff they don't know anything about should probably shut the hell up, shouldn't they, Lane? Like, you should shut the hell up about what thermodynamics is, what the first law of thermodynamics is, what it says, what it doesn't say, and whether calories in, calories out is a good utilitarian, safe and effective tool for the population at large to use in order to control their weight or body composition or something. Because that's an area you don't know anything about, whatever, at all. And yet that's something that you feel perfectly happy and competent to talk about, despite the fact that I've shown on multiple occasions that you're anything but. You don't even know what the first law of thermodynamics says. You might do now. You might have gone and looked it up since I corrected you on it. But I can show you a short video, less than a minute long, that proves absolutely that you do not know what the first law of thermodynamics says or what the implications of it are. In fact, let's look at it. Here it is. Because here's the thing. There's this thing called the first law of thermodynamics. Yes, the first law of thermodynamics, which does not apply to open thermodynamic systems. But we'll get to that in a minute, because let's let him say this, because it's so funny. Which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred in form. Okay, Lane, <laughs> Lane, 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 Lane. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say anything remotely similar. To that. <laughs> oh my word. Lane, matter is not conserved. Okay? If you doubt me on that, just go and interview uh, anybody who may be alive still who was in Hiroshima, Japan on the morning of the 6th of August 1945 and ask them whether or not <laughs> Lane, mass is conserved. Right, there you go. So there's Lame Norton's credibility. You should shut the hell up, Lane. Okay, what's next? What this study showed was there was an association of red meat consumption. No, reported red meat consumption. Reported. That's not the same thing as red meat actually consumed by people. See how they're very different, Lane? 
colorectal cancer, I believe breast cancer, and type 2 diabetes. The associations were very, very weak. Non-existent, basically. Of no utility to any one given living human being over a 100-year lifespan. We're done. But you're still talking, Lane, for some reason. And these associations tend to be really inconsistent from study to study. Non-existent, in fact. Heterogeneity between studies. We're done. But you're still not, for some reason. And the absolute risk... No, not risk. No. Read this off. The increased risk of... No, not risk. Still. Colorectal cancer, breast cancer, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes were 6%, 3%, 1%, and 1%. So nothing. That's and, and it was an association between what people said they were eating, not what they actually were, and the incidence of diagnoses of disease process variously, having been adjusted to something other than what it actually was. That's good science in Lane. Good work, son. Pretty low. Now again... Zero. And to all intents and purposes for any given living human being over 100 years. It could be a risk, and we're talking... No. Probably not. There's no reason to suspect that consumption of meat is causally associated with deleterious health outcomes of any kind for any reason. There are no mechanisms that underpin that. Nothing established at all. Relative risk, too, which is important to understand. They're not risk, still. And so relative risk... No, not risk. If something, for example, says it has a 10% relative risk... No, not risk, still. That's not like your risk is... No, not risk, still. It's 5%, and now it jumps up to 15%. That is your risk is... No, not risk. Still. 5%, and it increases by 10% to 5.5%. So Adjusted. So, fantasy. When you're talking about a relative risk of... When you're talking about relative risk, you're showing your ignorance of what science is and what it isn't, because it's not risk. Still. 6%. If your risk of cancer no. is 5%, it goes to an absolute risk No. 5.3%. So people who are kind of in the anti-meat camp might say, well, that's you still should eat meat because even in this study, which is obviously biased, insert sarcasm for people who don't understand it, even in this study, they still found an association with some of these uh, negative health effects. No, they didn't, to speak of. We've covered that. There's nothing there of utility whatsoever. It's basically a null result. Hypothesis dismissed in this case. Yes, but there are... No. Lame. A competent statistician can point to that and go, no, there's nothing to see here. That's why you should shut the hell up. Also, especially with colorectal cancer... That and your theories on physics and thermodynamics and calories in, calories out, that's another good reason for you to shut the hell up too. So they're not correcting for every confounding variable. You so can't correct for anything. It is impossible. Cannot be done. For anything. It is a fallacy. You've been had if you don't understand that. And if you don't understand that, it's because you're not a competent statistician. Sorry. So, for example, fiber and fruit and vegetable consumption. We know that fiber and fruit and vegetable consumption have very powerful effects. No. No. Still. On reducing the risk. No. False. Of colon cancer. Wrong. Absolute nonsense. Rubbish. Come and debate me on this lame. Bring your references. I'll show you what's wrong with them. I'll tear you and your ridiculous ideology to pieces without breaking a sweat, son. You're out of your depth. So, for example, there was a study done a few years back. Cite it. In 100,000 people. Cite it. Where they looked at red meat consumption. No. Reported, I would suspect. Did they keep people locked in labs under observation for years at a time, lame? Did they? But crossing that with also fruit and vegetable consumption. And what All right, so another covariate then. Oops. Did they control every other confound, collinearity, every degree of freedom that could possibly impact the outcome in any way? And then having done that, did they make sure they reported what they actually observed? Or did they adjust it to something other than that? 
in a completely inappropriate manner. What they found was that if you got fruit and Who's they? Because you haven't cited the study that was done. Vegetable consumption high enough, there was no effect of increasing red meat. No associative study can inform on any aspect of effect, which is the conjugate of cause. Lame. Still. Consumption on the incidence of cancer. On the other side, you've got the carnivore folks who are like, see, you eat as much red meat as you want. It's not going to hurt you. It's not. There's no reason to suspect that it will. Of course, there's such a thing as eating too much of anything. Of course there is. Drink too much water, that'll kill you. Too much oxygen tension in a closed environment will kill you. It's always the dose that makes the poison on everything. But eating a sensibly planned, appropriately executed diet, which consists almost entirely, if not entirely, on the muscle meat and associated fat of mostly large ruminant animals, cooked or otherwise, is fine. Apparently, there's no evidence or even implication anywhere that would lead anyone remotely sensible to believe otherwise. Those are the facts, whether you like that or not, lame Norton. The study says, the study says... What study? You haven't cited a study. That it looks like there is a small increase in risk. No! It's an associative study. It cannot inform on risk. Still! Again, you cannot covariate out every confounding variable. Or indeed any of them. Because you cannot untwist a mixed outcome, a mixed input outcome variable like death or disease incidence. You cannot apportion or, or sub-fraction contributors using associative data. It is impossible. It can not be done. Is there an increased risk? No, because it cannot inform on risk at all, one way or the other. It's possible? Yes, but this study is unable to inform us on it. So to, to even mention risk is completely inappropriate. What is my personal opinion? My well, your opinion is worth absolutely zero, Lame Norton. I have shown on many occasions publicly the exact reasons why your opinion has such a low value, subterranean value, none. You are not credible, Lame Norton. Not credible at all. And in dispersing a bunch of ridiculous, fallacious, schoolboy errors with one or two remotely sensible comments, potentially in the right context, does not give you credibility, except in the eyes of people who are stupid enough to be taken in. That's Darwin in action. That is those people's lookout. Okay? My personal opinion is when it comes is to of no value. On processed red meat, I don't think there's much of a risk as long as there is nothing to inform us on risk, so your opinion is unimportant. As all your other lifestyle behaviors are healthy, such as exercising. Yes, the right kind of exercise at the right intensity, at the right volume, the right number of times a week, etc. Absolutely. Eating enough fruit and vegetables. Well, the enough fruit and vegetables is none, Lame Norton. None at all is, is what's required in the human diet. Eating enough fiber. N same deal. No fiber is required in the human diet for health, longevity, robustness of everything. Zero. Many people who eat high amounts of red meat often replace their fruit and vegetable consumption with red meat. Well, that's a good idea. Prove me wrong. While we're all giving opinions on things, because there is nothing that proves me wrong on that. Carnivore advocates, if you really want to advocate for red meat, you should also be advocating for fruit and vegetable consumption. Right, so you should probably also, Lane, once again, shut the hell up. And while you're shutting the hell up, you should also go and study the Randall cycle, which will explain to you why what you've just said is so absolutely ignorant, ridiculous, vacuous, erroneous, contraindicated, and stupid in the extreme. The Randall cycle. Go and look it up, son. Because in the studies, 
What studies, lame? You want to say the studies, you cite them. What studies? It shows that if you- What studies show what? Get fruit and vegetable consumption high enough, red meat consumption doesn't seem to be an issue. Now, but there are no studies that show that red meat seems to be an issue, irrespective of the intake of anything else. There are no studies that can inform us on any aspect of this. None at all. Studies also show very clearly that failure to hit the like button on my videos results in late night visits from Yellow Ted, my co-conspirator. He will bring his truncheon. It will be polished. Studies show. Hit the like button. Unless you want to visit from Ted with his truncheon. And his bucket of soapy frogs. And his wetsuit with the bottom cut out. You don't want that. Hit the like button. Do it now. Now again, I don't think that's necessarily an effect of red meat. You don't think at all, I'm Norton. You are out of your depth in terms of thinking about these aspects of science, scientific implication, scientific design, statistics, all of it. You're completely out of your depth. Sorry about that. I think it's more of an effect of people just aren't- No, not effect. Not effect at all. There are no studies to inform us on effect on any aspect of human nutrition in terms of hard health outcomes in human beings over any period of time. None at all. They do not exist. Eating enough fruit and vegetables when- Enough fruit and vegetables is still none at all. You're eating a lot of red meat. My recommendation- Your recommendation is exactly the same value as your thoughts and your opinions, lame. Zero. Your recommendation is worth absolutely nothing. Based on this study is basically- What studies, Lane? Based on the studies. What studies? Still, shall we wait? What it's been. I think red meat is- No, you don't think. Fine in moderation, especially unprocessed red meat, but you need to make sure that you're eating- What's moderation? How do I know I'm being moderate if that's indeed what's required, which it isn't, by the way? enough fruit and vegetables still none not because they're necessarily canceling out something bad that red meat does but because they're just healthy overall no they're not there is no evidence to support that ridiculous claim lame norton none at all show me a study over multiple decades in human beings properly controlled in a laboratory lock-in situation for hard health outcome with every other possible confounding factor controlled properly and a properly um, randomized cohort of research twins at the, at the outset, by the way, and you might have a point. I know, and you know, that such a study does not exist and never will. So shut the hell up. Whereas studies on red meat... There's what studies on red meat? Quite a bit of disagreement amongst the studies whether or not it causes cancer. No, there are no studies that inform on cause in, in any way. None at all. Cause is the conjugate of effect. The effect being cancer. You're saying this causes cancer. Then you show me an experiment. It does not exist and it never will. Goodness me, this isn't hard to understand. Even if you do have an IQ and... Maybe double fidgets, double fidgets, double digits. I know who's double fidgeting. Mr. Jump Cut, Mr. Can't Keep His Hands Still. Or heart disease or these other things. In the studies on fiber and fruit and vegetable... Seriously, son, put your hands in your pockets. Keep them there. Assumption, there is no disagreement in the studies. There is a... What? There are no studies that inform us on cause and effect, one way or the other. That's what the, the lack of disagreement is, if anything. Idiot. Linear effect. Of no. You used the word effect again. Folks, again. This is not an experiment you're talking about, is it, Lane? No, son, it isn't. Big fiber intake. On oh, it's not reasonable to do an experiment. Therefore, I can claim causality anyway. No. A disciplined scientist understands that there is no evidence for cause and effect and refrains from using that terminology. That's the responsible thing to do, lame Norton.
And if you're unable to do that, actually the responsible thing to do is to shut the hell up. Decreasing the risk of mortality. No, not risk. Still. No. Cancer and heart disease. Right? Wrong. False. Inappropriate. Incompetent reading of the literature there from Lame Norton. Every 10 gram increase in fiber, there is a corresponding relative 10% decrease in the risk of No. Not risk. And that's confounded. And it's adjusted. And it's not science. And it's based on respondent data. And, 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 and all day. All the things I've already been talking about quite a bit in this video already. All of you out there looking for these longevity hacks and you're sitting in the sauna and then cold baths and then a bunch of other stuff, the real longevity hack is probably fiber. No, it isn't, Liam Norton. False. Absolute rubbish. Nonsense. There is no evidence to support that claim existing anywhere in the literature whatsoever. If anything, it seems like fiber is almost certainly contraindicated. That's one of the things that you and I can debate. If you ever grow a set, some, and stop trying to chip at my credibility, which is above reproach, instead of actually fronting up to dealing with the actual material, the material about which I am absolutely unequivocally competent, and you are apparently not. Sorry about that, just the facts. All right, guys, if you like the video, nope. like the video, nope. Subscribe to the channel. Nope, don't do that. If you enjoy these research breakdowns... <laughs> what research breakdown, Lane? What research breakdown have you undertaken in this video at all? You've given us your vacuous, imbecilic opinion. That's all you've done. Nothing else? Make sure you check out my new research review, Reps. Yeah, I wouldn't bother with that. Lame Norton is completely incapable of competently assessing, critically assessing literature. I've shown that time and again. He has shown that time and again. What more evidence do you need? This is where you need to be. Lock it on this channel and let Lame Norton know your feelings about his lack of intestinal and testicular fortitude by way of his refusal to front up to a discussion with me about science. We can even do it politely if you want to, Lame. We don't even have to swear at each other or call each other any names if you don't want to. We can just deal with the science and the empirical um, inference such that it may be about any given moot that we decide that our discussion will be centred around. Front up, sunshine. Every month we assess five different studies. I don't believe you're remotely capable of us, as I've said. So what's the value in that? None. Just like the same value as your opinion and your uh, recommendation. Both worth nothing whatsoever, lame. Health and nutrition, and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy for anyone to understand. So well, lame, you're in no position because you yourself do not clearly understand. As I've shown, I don't know how many errors you've made, and it's usually the same error, again and again and again and again throughout this video of yours. Incredible. The Dunning-Kruger is stunning. The arrogance of you is stunning. The desperation in you is also, well, not surprising because I'm actually unassailable. So your, your attempt to assail is to try and chip away at my credibility rather than dealing with what's in front of you, which is the science. The science doesn't care who I am, Lane, or who you are either. The science says what it says and doesn't say what it doesn't say. That's what I want to discuss with you face to face to point to your charlatanism, to point to your lack of competence, and to show for once and for all who it is that is, in fact, credible regarding science here. If I'm so wrong and it's so easy to show this, front up. You have your opportunity. But I suspect you'll continue to be a coward because leopards don't usually change their spots, do they? Unless they're female leopards, in which case... They lose their spots because their spots expand and they become all black and they turn into panthers, don't they, boys? <laughs> That's for another day. Well, if you're interested in signing up for that, make sure you click the link in the description. Yeah, don't do that. And I will catch you next week.
No, you won't catch us next week because everyone from your channel should have come across to me by then, having seen this. Um, just pathetic, lame Norton. Just absolutely destitute as usual. No value, nothing worthwhile at all. Thanks for coming, even though you didn't. Um, yeah. Hope to see you soon for a discussion, lame. I doubt that it will occur, though. Yep. All right. See you then. Ciao for now. Let's have some Vivaldi. Two, three, four. Ba -ba 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 -ba